Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Everybody, Russ and My Hammers 11. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. She made an event and we put new content on. As always, like to thank our lovely channel sponsor, Suntuck It. Check them out in the description below. Another fan's My Hammers 11 today. Looking forward. It comes recommended as well. So, no pressure, Ian. Thanks, How mate. Are <laughs> <laughs> How are we, Ian? How are we? Yes, good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. As I said, it's a, it's a slightly sunnier day in, in Orm Church today, so it makes things a bit more bearable, doesn't it? Yes, without a doubt, mate, without a doubt. Yeah. How, are you watching much of the Euros? Um, I watched it last night. I was, you know, it was just a matter of just keeping on the England games, really, and then popping in and seeing how, you know, how the Czech boys got on when they played Scotland, and then yeah. looking at Arnautovic a little bit as well, just to see whether he's still got it and whether it's worth us chasing him or not. You never know. So, yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's one of those things where it's, yeah, you're sort of like almost doing like your own little scouting mission, aren't you? So, yeah, yeah. it's one of those things where you're just trying to sort of just say, oh, he's not bad. He's okay. Yeah. And, but yeah. And also making sure none of our boys get injured or anything. And that's they perform right. Well, it's like the England game was really weird because it's like England were playing, but, and Declan was playing, but you wanted the Czech boys to do well, but not too well that. You know, make a good account of themselves. You don't want them to get skinned yeah. by Jack Greenish, but you didn't want them to win. It was a really weird thing. The best thing was they did was take Declan Rice off because I was like relaxed then. So it's like, okay, it. well, we can concentrate on the two boys and make sure they do all right now. No, definitely. Definitely. Like you say, one nil's creditable, isn't it? Our, boy, our, our two Czech boys ain't got smashed. England have won. We go on to the next bit. Yeah, it is. It's exactly that. And, and we'll just see what happens now. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm not. I'm not like, and I suppose I get really passionate about England. I just don't, I'm not one of those people. It's really weird. I'll be a right turn cow if we got through to like the quarterfinals or semifinals. I'll be like really into it then. But it's, it, I don't know, it's just weird. It's like if someone says to me, would you rather England win the World Cup or West Ham win the FA Cup? West Ham win the FA Cup. That's, that's FA like Cup the answer all, all the yeah. day, isn't it? So, um, and it's funny because you get all these guys, oh, you know, the Scotland game was such a disappointment. Blah, blah, blah. That's just like West Ham 101 for us, isn't it? You know, you build us up and we know you're going to come crashing down. And that's just like, that's why I wasn't so bothered about the Scotland game. Because it was like... No, it's, 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 it's one of them, you know, they're celebrating like they've... they've won the world cup just because they've stopped us winning but you know it's one of them games i mean it, it, gareth southgate will argue that his tournament play and all that you've got to manage the game and everything else you know now it's a knockout you, you've, you've got to go out and be the better side now so yeah it's you know get on with it now yeah yeah just get on with it and see what happens but you know apart from that before then obviously west Ham did all right last season didn't we did all right. oh mate unbelievable unbelievable i mean played some lovely football and just you know what it's like yourself for us i mean how long we've been supporting them you just when we go one up in the game you're sort of thinking we ain't gonna hold this we ain't gonna hold this but last year we looked like we could mm. you know and i think that was a massive change for us the fact that we could hold on to a one nil lead and not and not blow it like we normally did or go on and or you didn't worry when we was away from home and let a goal in no Whereas previously, you sort of like if we let a goal in in the first ten minutes, it's it's done, and you know we're getting beat. It's one of those things that yeah, it's it's a change in mentality, isn't it? It's like yeah, there was a few games last season. I think Leeds away where they scored after the first like couple of minutes, and and various others, and you just had this sort of like yeah, yeah, doesn't matter. We're gonna score. We and and again, I can't remember a, a time for a long, long time where we've we've had a side that always looks like it's got gold in them do you know what i mean it's usually christ i remember you know it's sort of the the mid the late nine or just before the just you know we, we had like people like mike newell and jonah up front bless them against leeds at home and i remember we lost three nil and it was like we didn't look like scoring for like a week if we tried no. um no. where this team just seemed to get goals everywhere which is great you know it's lovely to see um yeah. and just really instills got it's just but it's typical isn't it that, that most of you have, can't go to the bloody games because the team the time we turn up in the last five years no bloggers apart from me and a few others can go so uh um, yeah just typical man isn't it absolutely typical. It's, but it's but the i'll take the results right. every time yeah it, uh, it's the same you would people would people would watch it at home just to get just to see it. and because it's you know in, in a crazy world that we live in now you know not having to worry about west ham being relegated 
is is perfect. You know, it's the last thing we want. Something else on top of everything else that's gone in the world. Yeah, it's West I mean, to... it is ridiculous, but it sort of takes over, doesn't it? You sort of look and, and you, you can watch every game, and you know, it's, it's still. You know, perhaps I'm being too cynical, but but you're thinking, right, get the 40 points. And even though we never looked at, like in, in a million years that we were ever going to go down this year, mm. you still think, well, still want to get the 40 points first and <laughs> so then we'll see true. what happens. It's so true. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of West Ham clips. And and like for like the, you know, he was like counting the points down, you know, eight points to go, seven points yeah. to go. And that's still our marker. And I think it should always still be our marker. You know, get 40 points. And then it's get 42 because obviously we went down, didn't we, at 42. Yeah. You know, 202. And so, uh, um, yeah, no, it's like okay, get that. Then, then we can see. Then we can enjoy it and see where we go. But I mean, you know, you know, European tour next season. Um, hopefully, get a good team. Uh, you know, we'll get a big team drawn in the Europe because obviously we're not seeded, so we'll get a good team drawn. And yeah, it's just good. I just think is there's, yeah. there's just. I mean, you you know, you've been a fan for a long time, Ian, and there just seems to be real optimism uh, about West Ham at the moment. Yeah, um, I, I think it's, it's probably arguably probably the. The best team spirit since possibly '86. When you look at it, it the, the, uh, the one that's what looks yeah. great about it is the club looks united. Yeah, and and that's what that's well, that's the great thing to see is all the players look like they're all pulling from the same M sheet or whatever, and it looks really good. It's really good to see a, a West Ham team like that. You're totally right. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably not. I think after night. I mean, I wasn't really. I was only five, eight, six. But um, but then you've got like I'd say maybe maybe that sort of ninety night that red nap era, the good red nap era, with righty. Just in terms of team spirit. Yeah. And then yeah, you're probably right. I reckon then since then, I mean, even like the last season at the bowling, I wouldn't say there was a. I mean, the team was a team, but it wasn't really. It was like a, a team of individuals. It was Dimitri Pyatt and... And, and 10 and others. other geezers, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, this one, it's like... I mean, I've seen stuff that they haven't... You know, I've never seen. So, like, of course, they decided to do a little bit of a team huddle, which I like a team that does a huddle. That's good. But, you know, like, bef- like an hour and a half before the kickoff, they're like walking around the pitch you know in their tracksuit bottoms and and face masked up they're doing like a lap of the pitch like all like jostling and i've never i have never seen that and it was no. like little things like that it's like there's a real team here and you just see it's you're right everyone seems to be pulling in the right direction which is great whether it's the fans and the team together and, and moisey takes full credit for that full credit without a doubt i mean again sort of like bringing nolan in was the master stroke that allardyce yeah. did and he, he sort of when he had him playing and then Pierce as well. And, and they play a big part as well. I think all the way he's got all the coaching staff together alongside him, I think they've, they've done a tremendous job, you know, and it's, as I say, just hope that we push on from that now and, and yeah. don't, and don't let this, this sort of great atmosphere slide away, which I really hope we don't. No, you're totally right. And you're, yeah, I mean, if we ended up seven, 16th next season, this season will be null and void, really, in terms of that. I don't think it will. Do you know, I reckon, you know, I think six, I think we've, we've, we've obviously overachieved it, but I think, you know, regularly being in the top 10 should be our, you know, where it was getting 42, getting 40 points as quick as possible. You know, now our minimum should really be, be getting top 10, this team yeah. and, 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 and the setup and how it will improve going forward. And, and then it should be a minimum of getting top eight. And, you know, that that's, that's the way I want to see it. I want to see this progress, but at a steady pace, not like, you know, Manuel Pellegrini spend 200 million pounds and it just went like, Meh? out of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's... It's like, and even in that, how bad we was, there were still six games we could have, we we could have been third. I can remember Easily. people going to the games and people going, "We went today, we'll finish third, we, we'll be third. Mm. And you know that's great, but look where it ended up that season. Yeah. You know, whereas this year, if 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 we hit six again, if we be six, between six and ten next, next season, it'll, it'll be a result, and it's it's a it's a build. Problem is with us, we've had one good season, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're sliding. You look after eighty six, mm. we slid. 2016 we went into the new ground and we yeah. slid you know it's, it's we, we don't do that no more no you're right it, it's it's it is it's true you think people think about you know it's like we never seem to capitalize on that good season uh and we've never done it really you know no. as you said 86 86 after the boys of 86 86 87 didn't do that and didn't do that and it's, it's, it's a frustration thing, but I think, you know, this team seems, it seems to be like a plan. I, I, again, yeah. I can't remember 
for a long time, probably under the probably under the, the Lal era, to be perfectly honest, where there's been a progressive plan. Do you know what I mean? It's like even Harry. Harry would bring in 11 players, sell eight. You know, there's no, yeah. like, there was no long-term, it was almost like season to season, hand-to-mouth type thing. Where here, you see Moyes has got this sort of situation where he's like, yeah, okay, this, this transfer window, we need a striker. We need a midfielder. The next transfer window, we'll need a goalkeeper. Because, you know, so there's a, like a, he's got like his plan in his head. And I can't remember the last time We've had a project, so to speak, like that. I also um, think on the other side of what we've got to get, I think it's the first the first season in a long time where we haven't had to get rid of anybody, where we haven't yeah. had the fault. We've got, you know, where we've had sort of four or five players that were, without being rude to them as individuals, as yeah. Driftwood, you yeah. know, that we sort of thought, How's, how did we ever buy him in the first place? Mm. And why we still got him? You can possibly argue that maybe Anderson's one that we've got to shoot out. Maybe, yeah. But, but that's only because of the amount of money that's that's behind him and he just hasn't performed. But really, that's the only one that you think that we have to get rid of. Yeah. And and then possibly the rest of the rest of, of the outgoings are Moise's choice. Mm. And that's the best way. I mean, you know, and it seems to be, you know, he's and he, and like, you know, the first thing he sort of did really when he came in properly was was ping out Anderson on loan. Uh, you know, our most second most expensive player in the ever, and and take off price for Haller. You know, our most yeah. you know, so it's almost like right, these guys aren't my aren't my guys. I don't want them in, and that's great. That's that's exactly what we want to see. We don't want to see we, we want to see people. And also, I think now we've got a system in play where you know when we when we because obviously it's silly season, we get linked to to everyone I, I, I keep it i keep a tally for my show because i find it hilarious that's that's the current tally and that's not oh. and that's not everyone no you can just see me peering over the top there <laughs> um, that's not everyone but every time one comes up you go he's, he's not going to fit the system you could dismiss people straight away it's like mm, yeah no mm, no where it, like it used to be i don't know what system we're playing so he we could be after him i don't know but now it's like you can already take the silly season you can sort of edit it a bit which again is great and uh yeah no i'm excited for next season now i'm excited no without a doubt without a doubt back as well do you know because obviously people have missed the stadium they've missed going to the games and it might just you know it was a little bit a bit sort of tetchy weren't it um before then and it's almost like a refresh a restart like you've restarted your computer you've been running a bit slow restart it all back to normal again, you know. So, no, without a doubt, I mean, it's again, it's going to be the pleasure of being back there. And I, I always felt that with the move, the worst thing we didn't go in with a good side. Had we gone yeah. in with a good side, people might not have looked at the scaffolding so much. And you know, I agree totally. I agree. It, it was just we had a poor side, and so therefore yeah. you, you had nothing to cheer on the pitch, so you started to look around. Yeah, you do. It, it's, it's totally right. If the team are performing, that's the last thing people people talk about. You know, is is the surroundings because they're they're encapsulated with the match. And yeah, and despite you know, and I'm always a you know people are you know sometimes I think people have you know slightly claret tinted glasses of of Upton Park. Beautiful. It was, a, was was it was a mecca. It was our mecca. It was our church. But you know, on a wet on a wet November Tuesday night, and you know. The district lines down and people have to walk all the way back to barking or you know <laughs> things yeah, like that. People forget, i think don't they? i think upton park always had that magic because it because it, it was our home and, and yeah. i think it's where it's sort of like some of the blokes my age get a bit of stick off of the younger ones of, of regards you, totally. you know why'd you go on about it we grew up there you know if you look we, we went to primary school we still went to upton park we went yeah. to secondary school we went to upton park yeah, yeah we got went to work but we still got to upton park and all our eras the one sort of solid base in our lives was was, was upton park sure. you know and, and and so that's a big a big wrench for that to be mm-hmm. taken away and you know i get where people say we've got to move forward i, I get all that it's just you you know you do miss the old place because it was yeah. such a massive part of our lives it was you know yeah. and I was lucky I was able to take my two daughters there, which I was really pleased about that they, they saw the place, you know, because, mm. all right, dad's told me all about this great place. But I think they could have, when they did it up, I think they could have done that better. Yeah. I, th- I think they could have they could have made the corners better. Yes, all there was the talk about the development of, of the East End, but I still think they could have done a better job of it. Mm. But we have to look forward now, Russ. Yeah, it's true. And you're right. And it's, it's, it's like anything. It's like, you know, I don't know, a new pair of shoes pinch a bit, don't they? And then eventually you get into them and, and, and they're slip-ons by the end. And, and and I think that's it. We speak, we're at that place for so many years 
as you said, for someone like yourself, most of your life you've known West Ham play that stadium, and then the mm. you know relatively short amount of time they're playing somewhere else, and so, and it is, and it's it's horrible to think, but it's not. You know, in my opinion, it's not about necessarily us. It is about your daughters. It's about my daughter, yeah. and and it's horrible to think that I was talking to a guy today, and he was he, he's he's uh, he's he's fifty seven, and he's talking about remor- remortgaging, and his company and his bank will only give him fifteen years, and he's like. <laughs> It's like Christ, I'm getting old, but yeah. that's it. That, that, that's it, unfortunately. And um, and but I think, I think if we get a team that we're proud of, which we have sort of now at the moment, then we'll see. You know, as I said, I mean, you know, I think it's. Uh, I mean, I've heard some great atmospheres at that place at London Stadium. Yeah, you know, in all fairness, I mean, when we stopped Tottenham winning the league, when Lanzini exactly. scored, I mean, the place was jumping. Yeah, exactly. The place was jumping. Chelsea in the League Cup. Yeah, it is. There's some great, some great games. It can happen, but. It but can. we could have had a purpose-built built, built stadium. Yeah. But the bottom line is, the stadium's only as good as what's on the pitch. You're totally right. You're totally right. And no one forgets about Leighton Orient and Tur- Tottenham. Because if, if it weren't for them, we'd have owned the stadium. Yeah. yeah people forget people forget that people forget that you know we had, it was a set because obviously they they we, we were we were basically awarded the tenant we awarded the ground we were given the keys and they took the keys away and said no you've got to pay for the keys on a, on a tenancy basis because of orient and tottenham anyway rant over yes <laughs> anyway so you, you mentioned it briefly and so obviously you know in terms of why why you're a west hammer um why you're a hammer that's what they're called west hammer no just called a hammer um from from birth growing up in the area is, is that yep. the main reason yeah and dad took me we'd come out of new city road we walk around the corner and then chuck a left into green street and that was it 10 minutes wow. you're there yeah and you know it was just it was just magical it was just you know my dad's been to every football league ground he's done my old man and but and he so we used to go out if, if west ham were away and it was too far then we would go to a different ground but yeah. nothing nothing had the magic of of Upton Park. I mean, I had a mate of mine that lived in just up the road and he was a Chelsea supporter, you know, so there was other teams sort of locally that, that people, you know, supported, but Upton Park just had a magic about it. And I don't, you know, you, you can't tell why, but it was just, that was, whether it was, it felt like home, whether it was magical, whatever it had, it had everything for me. I mean, I started off on my stall at the front and worked my way back as I got older. You know, my dad used to sling me down the front, built a stall for me. That was down the front on the front wall with the west side. Lent over that for God knows how many years. years. Gradually I grew and, and I could stand on the terraces properly then. Yeah, I know, I know. It's one of those things where, and, it, and it's, I don't, and again, I don't think necessarily it's about, it's not really about winning because if it is, we've backed the wrong horse, but. Oh, it's a, yeah. it's it's about it's about family, and as you said, it is is about community, and it's about it's just your dad, and then your your daughters, and 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 you know, and it's about the memories, and that's what I think is really special about West Ham because it's like you've been at I mean, I've been interviewed three hundred and fifty odd people, and whether ex players or fans, they they all have that same collective spirit. You know, it's all about it's just a wet, an inherent west hamness it's like a personality trait which i don't think anyone has else in the in in the world of football which is why we're sort of this special little funny club in east london that has won bugger all in 40 years but yeah because you don't it, expect to win no exactly you, you know if if anyone can snatch a, a, a defeat from the draws of victory it's us but you know that's but that's part of the joy i, I think i could never support a team that was going to win every week and win titles and everything like that because they'd be for me There'd be no fun in it. You have yeah. to have your peaks and your troughs. And West Ham, you know, they provide that without, you know, any, any problem whatsoever. But it's, it's it's my team and that's it, you know, and it always has been my team and I ain't going nowhere else now. So oh, Too late no. now, isn't it? Too late now. Too late now. But as I said, it, it, again, it, it is, you're right. It's, it's just, uh, it, it, yeah, once you're in, you're in. I mean, I haven't interviewed one person who said, I went to my first game, it was all right, it was okay. It's literally, after my first time I walked in, that was it, I'm hooked, I'm done, I'm in, I'm fully invested, I blink and it's 50, 60 years later, and I've been supporting them for yeah. 50, 60 years. It's absolutely mental when you think about how long people, you know, you got... You yeah, know. I first went in 1970, Russ, you know, wow. I, I, and I've been, every season since then, you know, obviously apart from last season, but... You know, even as a kid, you remember the band coming out. You remember mm. 
The ball was so white that it looked like a balloon. The patch of grass outside the, the tunnel where the players ran out that was great in in August, but come the end of September, it was as bald as anything. And you know, but that was that was the that was the pitch. You know, that was that was Upton Park, and that was the great bit of it. You know, going with me dad. Two of us used to go into turnstiles, bung the bloke a pound, and you know, you know, the attendance was thirty six thousand. It must have been near a 40 42 because the amount of, I weren't the only kid that got pushed through on the turnstiles with his dad. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, what was the, you know, Eintracht Frankfurt that game? I mean, it was absolutely chocker. We was in there by something ridiculous like six o'clock because it was because it was so many queues, but we got in and it was it was packed. Same as Villa, the Villa six round in the cup. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, how many people are in that? It's true because everyone does seem to have gone to that bloody Eintracht Frankfurt game. Everyone I've interviewed, oh yeah, I was there, and as I said, there must have been about a seventy thousand capacity. Plus, like, the other everyone... game that everyone was at, the other game that everyone yeah. was at, although there was only eleven thousand there, was Cambridge on a Friday night when it snowed and the streaker got on at half time, <laughs> naked from the waist down. The fella. Now there was eleven thousand three hundred and fifty or something like that. But again, that's another one. There was fifty thousand there that night. <laughs> Oh, bless him. Streakers are like one of those things which just seem to have just fallen out of... They just No one streaks anymore, do they? No, it was just this no old geezer. Did some Mike Oldfield record come on <laughs> and he, he's jumped over on the pitch and starts dancing in front of the west side to it. Oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah. Bring back streakers. <laughs> That's, that was, that what do you second... reckon, Russ? First game of the season, should we yeah, do it? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a bit of right said Fred and see who wants to come on. I'm too sexy. See if anyone wants to take their shirt off and yeah. then be permanently banned for the rest of their life. So, yeah, maybe yeah. not. Um, but it's, uh, yeah. yeah. But that football was fun then. Do you know what I mean? Even like, you know, even like until, and I, we say this all the time. I mean, me and you know, me, obviously, you know, we, we know Eddie and me and Eddie spoke for hours about how, how football was used to be fun and now it's... It's not necessarily. Uh, it's a different game now. It's about technical ability, and I'm not saying that pick guys before weren't technical, but there was always that entertainment value of football. Do you know what I mean? It's like I find football so scientific now that it's almost like a game of chess. It's almost sterile, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's the best word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whereas you look at, you know, you look at, you know, recently we've been on the big match revisited every other week, and. Mm. You know, you look at what Upton Park was then and you look at grounds like Queen's Park Rangers, they were mud heaps. Yet people yeah. glided over them. You know, I'm, there's two in my team for, for later on that, that glided over them. So what would they look like now? Oh, yeah. On, on totally. pitches now. You know, you can argue that, yes, now they're athletes and they're better, they're more fitter than they ever was. But the game was more natural then. You kicked mm. off and the game went with it. You look now and, and they're bringing out boards of, just, you know, flip charts of you got to be here at this point and you got to be here at that point. Basically what it used to be was you mark the number five and don't, and don't go away from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It is true. And I think, I just think it's one of those things where, but also the reverse, I'd love to see like the players of today, throw them on, on that uh, sand pit, that beach of Stamford bridge. We beat them four nil, you know, yeah. just, just to see what Ronaldo or Messi could do, you know, cause it would be totally that they wouldn't be able to do anything. And, um, they, they look like absolute amateurs, I think, but you're totally right. It's just one of those, it's, but also it's just like, I think just because of money, you know, that you, you money in the game means that people have to be concerned with them as their, their, their persona. And so, yeah, I mean, someone like, someone like Maka, you know, Maka would be out on, you know, in the, in the, in the press every, every Saturday night with a page free model on his arm and da, 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 da and you, you can't do that now. Yeah, but you think you know, in his first season, obviously the football weren't getting shown. No one even knew who he was. Yeah. 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 You know, I remember seeing a thing on, on football focus or, or on the ball, whatever it was on the Saturday lunchtime. They've got McAvenny standing on Waterloo Bridge or one other, yeah, some other yeah, bridge. Yeah, yeah. Who's this fella? No one knew who he was. Can yeah. you imagine it now? He'd be a he'd be a superstar. Yeah. You know, just in them, that three month period, be an absolute superstar, and he'd be everywhere. You know, FIFA would love him, and, and it, it'd be mental. But yeah, you know, no one knew who he was. Nah, it's crazy, isn't it? Now everyone yeah. knows any, but now everyone knows anyone who any anyone who's decent uh, from the about age about fourteen upwards. 
Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, it's just it, and so you know the pressure on on players now to perform, but also to keep themselves squeaky clean, so they don't get don't lose a brand deal from something they said ten years ago or five years ago on Twitter. You know, it's and so because of that, you lose that personality side. You wouldn't get anyone like Frank McAvenny into no. Game. You you take it, and, and even going back to Bobby Moore's era when they go used to go yeah. back to, back to the black line and go on the yeah. lashing net. Someone would have their camera phone out now and go, "Oh, it's the West Ham team," and you yeah. know, put it up on Twitter, and it'd be an outrage, wouldn't it? Yeah, be an outrage. Drinking after the game, yeah, yeah. you know exactly. That's yeah. how much they care and all that. And no. it's true. It's true. I mean, we had. I mean, even like up to. You know, uh, so even like we was talking to Trevor Sinclair and stuff like that. So they'd go out on a Tuesday night. Harry would let him go out on a Tuesday night. No training on a Wednesday. Um, And nowadays, you you think, what? I can remember being, I was in a pub in Chigwell. I think it was Chigwell. And and Robbie Slater was in there with Julian Dixon. They're both smoking. And you're thinking, hold on a minute, you're playing tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it's mental, isn't it? It's it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. But also, I mean, but then you know, so you know, someone like them, you know, you, they were relatable because you know, you were you were in a pub. They could walk into the pub because they lived around the area. And they lived in yeah. I mean, I used to live in Loughton, and you know, they all lived in Loughton. So you you'd, you'd bump into people all the time, and and they were just like normal people. It's almost like now because they're almost like these finely tuned athletes that you don't see them in the co-op picking up a pint of milk. No, the problem is they're untouchable now, aren't they? You know, you did, yeah. like you say, Russ, you used to see them in the co-op or you might walk down the road and bump into them and sort of, you know, but you don't now. You know, yeah. they're, they're sort of up on their private hours in this state. And... Well, yeah, exactly, because it's money, isn't it? And, it, and fair play. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I had all the money, if I had their money, I wouldn't necessarily be in, be in a, I mean, we've got a nice house in all church, but I wouldn't be in all church. I'd be, as you said, I'd be in a, yeah. a plush apartment because fair play to them. But, yeah, you just miss that, you know, where we've had – that to get that that sort of interaction with players you know that, yeah i mean my daughter was nine she'll probably never she'd probably never see a footballer you know a current player walking around the streets in her lifetime no um, she might bump into him at a, you know a, a signing or something but whereas you know we'll still go and see the boys of 86 at the at the, at the, the queens or the cliffs or whatever you know and yeah. you still have that togetherness and and just all that yeah yes it's very true it's very yeah. true yeah, it's like I remember when we had Razor, and Razor said he told us the story when they got he got a uh, it was a Christmas party and they got done, he got arrested in Romford Town Centre, and then they put a two mile exclusion zone around Romford for Razor, and obviously Chadwell Heath's probably about a mile, so he could yeah. actually get to training. So he was oh, at home. And so so Harry had to go and get him to knock it back to a mile or something like that, so he could go training. Like that, that'd be like he'd be like vilified now, wouldn't he? Yeah. We oh, and we, but we all go half oh, and, and and nowadays, anyone who shows any any personality, we we, you know, yeah, vilified. Yeah, so like Jack Greenish, he's a cocky sod. If in the eighties or even the nineties, he'd be lauded like Gazza and people like that. But because yeah, but nowadays, because he's got a bit about him, he stands out in the crowd a little bit. And he gets vilified because he's a diver and. and, and Oh dear! Rats. But you don't sign him. Oh, straight away, straight away. Yeah, and he's, he's, and again, he's, he has that bit like uh, that sort of bit of the old school about him. Do you know what I mean? Just like a maverick play. You throw him on, and he'll do stuff, and he'll run forward, and he won't want to pass sideways. And 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 that's that's what particularly West Ham fans. That's what we love, isn't it? That sort of maverick. Yeah, but player. even to a point, someone like Jamie Vardy, who. who yeah. Runs his socks off, gives it to you, gives it to the crowd. I mean, gives it to West Ham every time he scores, and gives yeah. it to everybody when he scores. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's screaming up and hates him and all that. But if you signed him tomorrow, you'd love him. It was a bit like Ian Wright. Yeah. Ian Wright was the same. Yeah. Everyone hated Ian Wright if if, if you weren't an Arsenal supporter. Yet yeah. when he comes here, he was brilliant. One of the ones for me that, that was like that was Craig Bellamy. I never yeah. ever got Craig Bellamy before. And then when he came yeah. to us, you realised how much he cared. And it's so true. And and that was was Matt was sort of a really he, he changed my opinion, even to a point Ian Wright did, because he because he had a go for West Ham, you know, we're, however short he was he was with us for, but at least he had a go and he enjoyed scoring goals. And and Bellamy was the same. Bellamy gave everything. I remember him see, you know, you know, against for Blackburn and Newcastle playing against us and terrorizing us and people just mm. giving it to him. 
And then when you see what he does, that he actually really does care, then, you know, that, that sort of changes your opinion of him a bit. And that's, like I say, I think Vardy would play the same for West Ham as he does for Leicester. Totally. Because that's what he is. That's how he plays. And, totally you know, right. that's why you like people like that. Yeah, no, you're totally right, man. It's, it, it is, yeah. And also, I think someone like Vardy is very similar to someone like Antonio in that they've worked their way through the lower leagues. Yeah. You know, they haven't been like groomed, not groomed, it's the wrong expression, but haven't been sort of picked up at the age of 10, 11 by a Man City Academy. And they just stay there and just stay there. You know, they've had to turn up at Atney Marshes and play and stuff like that. And, yeah. But you're right. And again, they're a little bit like an old school player. I mean, I, I, we love a bastard player. Kevin Nolan. Kevin Nolan was a bastard player. Yeah. You know, and uh, Onautovic was as well. You know, you, yeah. you, you hated him when he was playing for Stoke. But West Ham, yeah, go on, son. Give yeah. Ben me a bit of a, you know, shouting out and stuff like that. <laughs> but that's the sort of thing we've always liked. Isn't it? I think I think the thing is with West Ham is, is as long as you try, people will take to you. You might not have yeah. to be the best player, but but as long as you try it, you know, it's the same as, as Zabaleta. When Zabaleta came to us, you sort of thought, oh, yeah. God, we're signing this old fella. Yeah. But he bought into it, and that's all you ask. I thought Zabaleta was a, a superb professional, you know, and he, he really bit oh, into totally. the club and, you know, and you sort of think, love to have had him five years ago. And I think that's the yeah. difference with us now. We're not going to buy players that would have been good five years ago. You know, that, I think right. that's the – I'm hoping that that's going to be the difference now that we stop buying these people because we've done it too many times. Yeah. And you don't think we will. That's the thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, as I said, when people like, I don't know, like oh, Diego Costa come out and we're, we're like linked to him. He doesn't fit the profile. We, we've, we've got a profile of player. We'll, we'll sign now. And so that's what I mean. I, you know, it, there's been too, too often we'd have like those mercenary players and, and, you know, coming for a payday, I always called us a bookend team. We either got people at the beginning of their career or right at the end. Sometimes yeah. it pays off. PSC paid off and, and Winterburn and, as you said, a few others, um, Sheringham. And, but but usually they sort of come for a payday, you know, like Arbeloa or someone like that, and it just yeah. doesn't work. And uh, you're totally right, man. You're totally right. But I suppose in a, in a weird segue, you know, it's a bit like boxing as well, though, in that, you know, you've got – Nowadays, the guys with the biggest personalities are the guys that draw the biggest money, because yeah, very much boxing so. now is very much. Is, uh, uh, Ian's, Ian's a uh, boxing trainer, so, so I thought it's a clever segue. But it's true because yeah. I think you know you go and you 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 want to pay the money to go and watch someone who's an arrogant sod either get knocked out or you know a really good guy you really you really want to see him knock out the bad guy. So you know there's it's it, there's that sort of it's not a pantomime nature, but it's in the same way with football. You like to go and watch the villain play and you'll go and boo him. It's the same with boxing, I think, as well. No, without now. a doubt. I mean, with, with boxing, just to, the, the whole thing of a, of, a, of a boy's career is is how he sells tickets. Yeah. You know, and and to sell tickets, you've got to be a bit of a character. Mm. So, you know, that plays into what you just said, Russ, that you, you need that character. I mean, there was a boy that boxed the other day, Nathan Heaney, I believe, who's from Stoke. And he's old out of venue, 600 tickets he sold and he reckons he could have sold it three times over and he's got all the mad stoke fans behind him and he walks in yeah. singing delilah and makes a bit now whether he makes british champion whether he makes a world champion who, who knows but it's it's that same sort of well i'm going so perhaps you want to come and and, and everyone gets behind him yeah. and that's what you need you know that's what you need and and you know if on out of it comes back yes there'll be people that moan about him but there'll still be people that will go and think I hope he's as good as he was last time. Yeah, that's no, true. We used to, I used to go. Well, I used to go. You're cool. One of our, you know, it was a couple of boys. Three of them. They were all brothers, and we'd all go and watch them. And they'd, they'd, they'd you know, draw at your call, and people would keep them on the on the car because all three yeah. of them. Because and then we'd all bugger off afterwards. So yeah, the main event, and no, there's no one there. But you're totally yeah. right. It is about you know, and I think even more so with pay per view and stuff like that. You know, it's all about what draws, isn't it? That's that's why. Yeah. Fury and yeah. Wilder can can spend you can get all that money because people will pay to watch it because you know and and how they adapt to to the audiences and uh, yeah oh, aren't we clever sometimes Ian aren't yeah. we clever just a conversation and and how's and you know in ter in terms of boxing obviously with everything that went on with with obviously COVID and stuff how was how, you know because obviously you you know obviously you couldn't do anything really when when everything was shut. 
No, um, it's, it's hopefully once sort of July the 19th, hopefully, you know, the government's as true to their word, that everything opens up. Then, mm. you know, there's a few dates coming in for small shows, but it's literally trying to get on that and find out that the dates are definite. The problem is the promoters are having difficulty committing to, for argument's sake, yes. September the 18th, because yeah. you can't wear small hall boxing is reliant on ticket sellers that, that the, the home fighters are going to sell their tickets because it pays for the venue and it pays for all the expenses etc if you've got somewhere like the your call that's only only holds 1100 people yeah if you can only sell three four hundred tickets for that you're not going to cover costs and so therefore do you then only put on the four fights that that covers but you're not going to cover the, your stuff you've got to pay for the bulge your uh, doctors and ambulances etc and it's very difficult and it's there's a lot of planning going on we, you know i've got a zoom call after this with with a promoter and, and eddie as well to to sort out try and sort out some plans for our boys but mm. it's it's that well i can commit this far but until july the 19th happens yeah i can't give you a definite and so mm. that's where it's struggling a little bit in the moment but hopefully as you say all this stuff's moving the right way and once we do open up then we can really sort of get on with it and move forward with a boxing and hopefully get the boys careers back but like i say yeah. you couldn't do anything before you had restrictions on how you could train them mm. couldn't get into the gyms some of the gyms if you had someone fighting on the big matchroom shows and the, and the frank warren shows you could open up but obviously you couldn't open up for anybody else no and and i, I know of gyms that were getting visits from the police to say well hold on a minute is he fighting and if he ain't you shouldn't be in here and out you go wow. yeah it's, it's, it's been difficult but in saying that Russ, it's been difficult for everybody, you yes. know, so yeah. it's... And, and, and again, with, with difficulty brings creativity. So obviously, you know, as you said, you know, when they yelled, the um, you know, when they, when they took out in the, the old Hearns and, and, and sort of taking over their own house and, and putting a boxing ring and yeah, fair play, you know, fair play. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's all about, it's all about creativity and how you can work around it and, you know, it's all you know it's the same as the darts you know is that the, when they did their own home home tournaments where they're doing it yeah. for their own zoom cam brilliant absolutely brilliant love yeah it. without a doubt oh, i love it i love it right let's let's go and talk about year 11. let's go and talk about year 11 Ian. so obviously everyone we have on the channel we, we get them apart from three people actually um out of 350 odd um has put together the hammers 11. so the idea is you can pick whoever you want it doesn't have to be the best whatever criteria you want to set is cool but the only rule is you have to be alive to have seen them play to be honest hard job for you from like the 70s onwards yeah pretty much well, most of the players <laughs> well what I, what I did to be fair i i did see bobby moore play for west ham and i did see jeff first play for west ham but in all fairness they went 73 and 74 respectively i might be a little yeah. bit out on that yes yeah, so i was only eight or nine so i've left them out because i couldn't really appreciate how good they were that's that's you know that's that's very honest of you ian very honest you know and i totally agree i would second that because you can't really and that's the whole thing why we put that in because obviously i know through hearsay and seeing you know big match and stuff like that what a fantastic player bobby moore was what a fantastic player trevor brookin was you know bonza i didn't see these guys play and i know how good they were and technically i was alive yeah. when they were playing or well, bonzo and uh and trev but i never my reference point was different my reference point started with pete butler and ian bishop you know what i mean yeah. so it's like d yeah. different couple of bees but you know that's that's how that's where my eyes start yeah so, so i've been cheating if, if i if i put I, I feel like i was cheating if i put I more in, than hurst in yeah. as as good as as i say i saw him but didn't appreciate him so sounds great right let's start in goal he's in goal then parks parksy without a doubt gotta be what a man without a doubt tremendous goalkeeper I'm, i can I, i'll never forget 80 the 80 season in the cup if it hadn't been for him we'd have never got to the final because west brom mm. away me and me and my old man were up there and he was brilliant I mean, he was a great keeper all round anyway, but he was absolutely brilliant that day. And, and you know, he saved us and, and put us on to, to, the, to the glories of, of winning the FA Cup. So Phil Parks, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and just a lovely bloke as well. Yeah. As you, yeah, that's what I mean. But they all are. I'm not being funny. I've interviewed like loads of people, loads of players, very, very fortunate to. They're all just lovely blokes. Honestly, I haven't had one. It's not one I've walked away afterwards and thought, God, he was a bit of a knob. They weren't. I don't, They're just don't, all don't, lovely. 
the one for me, Russ, was was I remember with my friends Chaz and Bob, we went to East End Working Men's Club yep. when um, Billy Bonds was there, and it was it was one of them. I'm not one for going to get me a photo took or anything like that. And I was there, yep. rumming an R in it, and and Chaz turned around to me and he said to me, "It's Billy Bonds." So I, I'll never forget it. I went up to him, shook his hand, and said, "Bill, one of my first heroes, mate. Thanks for everything you did." And uh, had me folk took with him, and as I walked away, he went, Thanks for them words. I was in bits. I know, yeah, honestly. You know, you just think, Hold on a minute, you're Billy Bonds, and you're saying thank you to me. Yeah. And, and I, as I say, I was in bits. I was, you know, I've choked up over it, and I've got the photo up on me wall out of the back room, but it was absolutely brilliant. And I've met Trevor Brooking several times, and lucky enough, my, my daughter met Trevor Brooking as well, so that was good. Yeah. That was good. So, no, it's yeah. not, it's, yeah, they're all just so not lovely people. Yeah, it's, and it's funny, and it, yeah, if some of them is like, you know, some people I talk to as players, and they might have only played, might have even played once, might have just played in the youth team, and they're just so passionate about their time at West Ham, and it just reaffirms that sort of love you have for the club, and same with you and Bill, you know, afterwards you're thinking, oh, I love that man, yeah. I love this club, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's exactly that, Russ, exactly how you say it. it, it was, and I was just thinking, you know, that's Billy Bond, and it, it was just people say never meet your heroes, and and yeah. I met one of mine, and you know that night, and he was brilliant. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Right, we'll put Parks in. Uh, first, uh, first defender, left left back, or whatever. It was up to you, man. People left back, Julian. 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 Frank Lampard oh. was close, but 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 Julian, yeah. for sure. You know, it, 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 you know, art on his sleeve and all that, and. Again, as, as probably many people have said, Russ, and, and, and you know, I'm not the first one for out the 300 odd. You've you've better player than he was ever given credit for. Oh, without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, should have been England's left back. Without. Oh, don't tell me about it. Yeah, I did a thing. I did a thing the other day of like, I, I, someone asked me about like, so I did a thing about England players who who were playing for England when they were playing for West Ham at the same time, and we only had 43. 43 in our really? entire history. Yeah. Wow. Starting, yeah, yeah, I know. 19, 1911, George Webb, all the way to Declan Rice. And every and there's only been 43 and like 400 caps, considering 108 of them are from a certain Bobby Moore. And another yeah. 49 would be Jeff Hurst. Another 30 would be Peters. That's about 200. So it just shows you. And then obviously you go, right, well, that's still the reverse. And so, I, and obviously, you could pick hundreds of players who didn't play for yeah. West Ham, England. And obviously, you got Julian, you got Bill, you got. I mean, Parks. He didn't play for West Ham, England when he was playing for West Ham. He made his appearance in '74 when he was at QPR, I think. So, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Julian Dix was, is, is a ridiculous one. We, we, we had Dixie on. He he, tell, he tells a story. I know everyone sort of has said it, heard it verbatim, but he tells a story about John Gorman basically telling him not not to uh, not yeah, to grow your hair and you can play. And he went, ridiculous. No, nowadays they, they they change her every week. Yeah, they Phil Foden. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Right, I we'll put Sir Julian in. Love him, love Jules. Top top boys. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go right back then. Go left back. Let's go right back. I'm going to cause a fight over who takes the penalties because he's Ray oh. Stewart. Ah, oh, good old Tonks. You're in, Ray. Sorry, he watches all of them. I'll tell him when he's in. You're in, Ray. It's all right. Yeah, top man. What a top boy. No, brilliant. Brilliant to come down that no one had ever heard of him from from Dundee, exactly, and to to take the shirt like he did, and to take the responsibility of of penalties. You know, the two that really stand out for me was obviously Villa, where the last minute felt like ten, yeah, and Liverpool in the in the cup final, League Cup final at Wembley, and we and we had the late penalty there, and he just went up and, and scored it, and you you know that takes a lot of bottle. You know, whether you're playing, standing in front of 10 people, whether you're standing in front of the 100,000 that were at Wembley that day, just to go out and put that penalty away like that was 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 something else. So, yeah, and a good player. You know, mm. I like Timmy Breaker. I saw John McDowell. Yeah. But Ray Stewart was superb. One of the best right-backs appearances I saw was by Paul Ince, played at right-back once for West Ham, was superb. Mm. When he was only, when he sort of, when he was starting out, he, he played, and obviously Johnson, but... But Ray Stewart for me. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, you talk about he's he's another one of those guys who just like loves the club. You know, and as you said, came down from Dundee, no one have heard of him, not from around here, and became an absolute icon and you know, still talks 
he could still talk for hours about West Ham. Like even like now, you know, in terms of when we when we chat, it's like it's not a ten minute chat with Ray with, with Ray to talk about West Ham. And um, no, I love it when I can understand him, of course. Uh, I say it now. No one takes his face, but I say it now. He's, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So and he's always got a lovely suit. He's always really well turned out. Of these player. What, what's Good. That? Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll put Dixie in. We'll put Ray Stewart first centre half. Then Alvin. Alvin. He's got no air, but we don't care. Yeah. He's, what a man! Brilliant, love him. Brilliant. Saw saw his debut, and then you know because you see his debut and he's you you just watch him and follow him and you know superb. And again, another one better footballer than he was given credit for. Yes, you know? that's something which I've just got in uh, not got into, but we did a, we did an Alvin Martin appreciation night last week, and Martin, who's he's the announcer at West Ham, he he puts he's got all these he's got the the most amazing like he's literally anytime West Ham's in the media he's got that clip and he puts it together like a highlights reel and there was so many assists you know almost like defense splitting balls that martin was putting through yeah to the strut cotty or, or maca and i didn't realize that was part of his game i really didn't and so i was like wow you know he was a proper cultured center back really yeah no very good and again really? you, you, in, in this modern era he, he would stand out and, and look mm. like a rolls royce i think yeah definitely definitely and uh yeah and again not from around these parts but you know still is still is yeah. around these parts he's he's uh his grandson goes to my, he's my daughter's year at school oh brilliant and he still does and, and and you know it, and that, that's what i love about these people you know there's no airs and graces about him you know when it comes to the the school fate he's doing the tombola do you know what i mean brilliant too, too right you know what i mean why not i wouldn't expect yeah. sebastian haller to be running the whack-a-mole you know in 30 years time no. at, at tower school but yeah yeah i love him uh right okay we'll put alvin in who's alvin gonna partner him i was gonna go with billy bonds because obviously as a center half but I've, I've had to move billy on to midfield so i've gone tony gale oh we got the boys in we got the pair in Should yeah good and that was it when you think of, of probably the best side apart from 2016 and 80 81 where bill played center half was 86 and gail played in that and my old man could forgive that man for anything i remember once he played everyone off on side fella's gone through and scored can't remember it was against fella's gone through and scored i went gail played them all on side dad he's gone that was potsy's fault and he gail could have scored an trick of own goals and my old man would have let him off and gone no it weren't his fault but no again another good player yeah. another great player top you know and again not giving, uh, not giving the credit not giving no credit. you know that was a you know you look at those two center halves with gail and martin and they were two very cultured footballers mm. you know the ball you know they would bring a ball down rather than try and edit out i know yeah alvin did it a lot more than tony but he, they would play it out and, and I think that was the big crux of our good West Ham were that season of 85, 86, was we played football. Yeah. And it was brilliant. Totally right, man. Totally right. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, he's got, he's got a Premier League winner's medal. Yeah. For Blackburn. That's what I mean. Fair play to him. Not many yeah. of our lot have got that. Right. Um, yeah. Your, your story about your old man and Tony Gale is the same with my granddad and Shaka, and not Shaka, it's like Trevor Sinclair. Honestly, Trevor Sinclair could do no wrong in my granddad's eyes. No. In fact, he thought he was every any, anything that was done good by anyone who was a black player at West Ham at that time was Trevor Sinclair. Could have been Shaka. It could have been, you know, any no. It's it's Trevor Sinclair. It's yeah. Okay. Couldn't see that the sun shone out of, out of Trev's ass. There we go. And, and I told him that, so he's all right. Um, right. Let's move into midfield then. Uh, left wing. Who's going to be on the left? Devonshire. Oh, so Dev. I was I was tempted by I was tempted by Graham Padden. I was tempted by Liam Brady, um, you know who I really liked. But but Devonshire, I mean, yeah. best five grand West Ham ever spent. Oh, and some, yeah, exactly. What can you, what can you get for five grand nowadays, Ian? Yeah, you wouldn't be able to buy Devonshire's boot. And and when you think he had that he had that period out with that bad injury he got in the in the FA Cup, and and you think he came back and and he adapted his game to 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 be a massive part of 86 and and and, and Devonshire in 86 was like a new signing mm. you're totally right and i think i think he and it, i think i said already as well you know the, the fact is he 
you know, again, unlike modern players who tend to be sort of relatively one dimensional, as you said, he had to come or go away. He couldn't, he wasn't the speedster he was. So he had to adapt his game and become a completely new player. You know, yeah. I mean, Mikel Antonio, we know his hamstrings are like jelly, but he's not going to end up being, you know, like a cultured centre back or anything like that. He knows one way and that's the way he plays. And, yeah. um, yeah, Devonshire was just, yeah. And again, you're right. Him gliding on those bogs of pitches, him now was, oh, how much would he be worth in today's game? Unbelievable. Unbe- Unbelievable. You know, just millions, millions upon millions. Fantastic yeah. player. Yeah. Fantastic. Partic- particularly like the, like the first iteration of the first generation of, of Alan Devonshire, that pace, you know, now with football, it's all about how quick the wingers are and, you know, and, and he would be, he'd have actually torn it up in the Premier League. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. Let's put Devin. Let's go right wing then. Who's going to be on the right? Sinclair. Tricky ah, Trev. there we go. Trev, you're in, son. Good old Trev. Yes. Yeah. My, and Mark, what well, I wrestled with Mark Ward, but, yeah. but, but for me, Trevor Sinclair did it for longer mm. at West Ham. Mark Ward had sort of three good seasons, really good seasons. And I think Sinclair did it for, for that much longer. And I think the other thing is, as much as the fuss about the Canio's goal, yes, took it well, brilliant and everything else. That ball was fantastic. And I was right in line with him when he hit that. And I, and I don't think that gets the credit it, des- it deserves oh. to a point. Because I think although the Canio took it brilliantly, but you couldn't have had a, you couldn't have asked for it to be better the ball yeah. to him so yeah he's got to get in even if it's just on that but no i thought sinclair was a superb player superb player worked yeah. worked backwards mm. as well as forwards great player yeah. no yeah uh, and again that's all he played probably about four or five different positions didn't he um during his time at west ham i think mean, he started up front he went right wing i think he played right back sometimes and right yeah, he did you know and it's like I love players who, can, who are adaptable. If you're a good player, you can play anywhere on the pitch. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you can do a job somewhere else. Totally, totally. And he played for England when he played for West Ham. So there we go. Yep. Fair play. I love Trev. Um, and again, a guy who absolutely like loves the like properly loves the club. And uh, I think there's a few like that. You know, I know there's people, everyone, but you know, someone like Sinclair, he was. Not on the scrap heap, but he was on the down when he was when he was at Q, towards the end of his career at QPR, and he came to West Ham and he just completely re, rejuvenated his career and got into the England team again and all this type of stuff and and that sticks in people's minds, you know. The same yeah. as the person who was on the who's on the other end of that of that ball, that Sinclair ball, the one who scored the goal. He's the same. He was on the scrap yeah. heap at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, funny story about that. Watch watch the Ian Foyer. Um, my hammer's 11. He tells a great story about that Decanio goal, but anyway, um, let's go central midfield. Who's your first central midfielder then? Brooking Sir Trev, Sir Trev. There he is. Yeah, just uh, like Bill, it, the, the, the the you know, and, and obviously, you know, the Bonds is going to be that one, but first proper hero and and just him and Bonds posters on the wall, mm. just the full bit, brilliant. Brilliant. I think it's just so. I think we've 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 Trevor. He's you know. I mean, he's just one of those players who just you know, just epitomised that generation, wasn't it? He was he was West Ham. He, he and Bill, you know, talk, talk about both of them because they, they sort of come. It came as a pair, really, when they were yeah. when they were in their pomp, and they just epitomised that whole era at West Ham, and you know how many games they played together longevity of how many games in total together the fact they both managed the club as well albeit you know yeah. trevor and a caretaker business where, where bill was more permanent but just you know i mean they got two they got two bloody stands that named after them do you know what i mean so yeah. you can't really get much more of an accolade than that no That's not at all i mean and, and just you know you could argue that, that brooklyn was the soft side of west ham and, and one of the reasons why we was looked at soft touches and then Billy Bonds was, was just everything that looked after Brooking. And, and yeah. I think that without going too deep into it, it's just, I think it sums West Ham up. If someone's that's a little totally bit struggling, yeah, someone yes. will support them. And it's, yeah. you know, we've done a thing last weekend for a, a fan and raised some money for him, but you know, and I think that, that, that epitomizes like we said right at the start, Russ, that epitomizes what's great about West Ham yeah. is, you know, you really did see kids passed up and, and, and other mm-hmm. kids were checked on. You know, I can remember a kid next to me when I used to stand by the wall and, you know, my dad saying to his dad, don't worry, he's all right. You know, we're, we're keeping an eye on him and all that. And and 
there was just that that's what makes West Ham special for me and, and I think those two epitomise it you know Brooke and Auburn says about our our bonds looks after him and, and mm. you know that that epitomises West Ham I mean I loved Bishop I loved Johnny Monker yeah, yeah. you know there's been many greats in midfield you know even sort of who's going to put the Cano in but I can't separate them two for 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 yeah. what they are and, and for what they mean to me so mm. No, it's got to be. You're them totally too. right, and actually, they they epitomise. If you if you could epitomise what's great about in terms of a West Ham player, you know, if you had to put together a West Ham player, they would be basically a hybrid of Trevor Brookin and Billy Bonds. In that you've got the silky skill. We love a skillful player. We love. Yeah, a, we love a footballer, rookie. don't we? We love we love a Joe Cole. We love a Pyatt. We love a guy who could just make us scuff our seat. But also, we want a guy who's going to put a shift in. Who's going to put a tackle in. A Bonzo. A Dix. Yeah. Repka, you know these types of Johnny Monks, these type of players. Yeah, and actually they, that epitomises West Ham. And you're, you're totally right in terms of you know. And of course, you know what I don't, what I can't get my head around when I was young, is you know I never got. I, you know I was quite not young, but I was you know I was I was you know reason to be young. And I went to went to West Ham, and considering this is probably the first time I've seen so many thousands of people there, I don't remember being nervous. I don't remember being intimidated. And you think for a young kid to turn up, and particularly now with 60,000 fans there, you know, you don't feel nervous. It's just this collective collective community spirit around them. And, uh, yeah, we, we get very – I love these shows. Yeah, we get very deep and, and meaningful. But, yeah, I love that. All right, we'll put Brooklyn and Bonds in. That's good. Right, first striker then, Ian. Who we got? I'm going Pop Robson. Pop Robson, yes. He's, we're going to do a show on him soon. I have been finding out loads about Pop Robson. Yes, I've got to type him in. Sorry, <laughs> Pop Robson, I've lost, I've lost it. I've lost him. Oh dear. Hopefully, get him on soon. I'm looking forward to. Him. He's not very well at the moment. But um, right, let's put yeah, Pop Robson. Tell me about Pop Robson then. Ian. Brilliant. Just you could score goals from anywhere. Whereas I, I, I'm gonna, I don't mean to do Tony Cotty a disservice because I just thought Pop Robson was a better version of Tony Cotty than Tony yeah. Cotty because he was the little fella that played up front. He, but he would score goals outside. He would score bicycle kicks. He could do the lot, and he would bring others into play. And he, he had two two spells at ours, and yeah. he, he's. I just thought he was fantastic. I just thought yeah. he was absolutely fantastic. He's worked. You know, you see, him, he still wants to score when we was four 0 down. Yeah. You know, and, and and that sort of thing, and 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 that's how much it meant to him to score. You know, whether it was to score for West Ham or whether it was to score for himself, whatever. But he was, a, I think he was a proper team player and I think he could score any sort of goal. You throw a short fella, scored headers. Yeah. Would slide in and tap it in. Would, would You know, not necessarily 18 yards out, but it would the edge of the box, he would hit something. And, and I just thought he, he had everything a goal scorer needs. Maybe or not, you could look that he was, could he have ever played for England? I don't know, but he certainly should have been thought about. I just thought he was fantastic. Yeah. And I think with Pop Robson, actually, it's funny because we've interviewed, I think we interviewed, we interviewed Tony Cotty and it was also Crossy as well. They both yeah. say that he was based, Pop Robson was their idol and they looked up to him. And you can see, obviously, Cotty, as you said, short man, short, you know, there's a, there were similarities there. Um, and, and Crossy loved playing with him as well. So I just think, you know, again, it's one of those players I don't know too, never knew too much. I've started to learn a lot more because mm. we're going to do a show about him soon. And so, you know, and you're thinking these guys, you know, you're right. How he never played for England, I do not know. Um, but yeah, it's always good. I love, yeah, he's, he's, he's an incredible person. Um, I, I'm friends with Sunderland fans and obviously he's, he's adored there. He's a big Sunderland fan. And so, he played for both. Yeah, I know. Newcastle and, and Sunderland, didn't he? Yeah. And, and and still he's revered by Sunderland fans. You know, some people do both, you know, and, and they get vilified, don't they? But he yeah. played for both and still ended up being sort of, you know, he's, he's always, they have the Sunderland, you know, legends nights and, and he always sells out. And obviously he does the West Ham ones as well. So, uh, right, we'll put Pop in then. Who's he going to partner? This, this was probably tough because I, I thought of Decanio. Yeah. I thought of um, David Cross. John Artson, although he didn't still last long enough, if you went on potential, you'd have gone for Dean Ashton, who could have, yeah. should have, would have. Yeah. Had he not had the angle. But I've gone McAvenny. Yeah. Because I think even I can remember I was in the North Bank the day he scored his hat trick against Forest on his last last game at West Ham. Yeah. 
and to come back again he come back he, he turned it could have took a lot of money for arsenal to go to arsenal yeah. but come back to us and you know come back to us didn't want to go and score that and, and proved his class by scoring that trick on the last game on his last game that was you know against someone as good as des walker and bearing in mind McAvenny's injuries and it you know they sort of said his knee was shot or whatever but to score that trick on your last game when you could really just have a ride out on that and just say thanks see you later and I was good in my day. He proved yeah. how good he was. Yeah. But 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 86, you know, that season would how hard he worked, you know, how he terrorized defenders and made them, you know, the worst thing is was having someone running behind you. And he did it all the time. And I can remember that I didn't go to the Birmingham game, but I, I went to the Queen's Park Rangers at home and Walden McAvenny made their first game. And that was just a breath of fresh air. Mm. You know, Walds tried to chip the keeper from the halfway line. And it went just wide. And McAvoy Ben is just terrorising the back four. And, you know, the shift he put in was tremendous. And then to come back as he did, no, legend. Can't leave him out. No, you can't. No, you can't. And again, he, he, he epitomised that team. You know, they're just like, you know, he, we've interviewed him a few times. And, you know, he talked about, you know, he would always want to, want to win. He'd always want to play, you know. Yeah. Well, he'd come back then. He'd go to Australia for Scotland. And then come yeah. back, landed on the morning, and then played in the afternoon played. at Queen's Park yeah. Rangers and yeah. scored the winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just that, that's what you amazing. want, isn't it? That's what's so great about the two Czech boys, isn't it? That they just oh. want to play. It's that, there is a lot of old school about them in terms of how they want to. You know, there was that time in the I can't remember what the game. It might be the Tottenham game or Argaf when you know when when Suchek had his face like sliced open. The first thing we'd do was was stop the ball, was get back up and you know and block the ball. And it's like there's this sort of and, and again that sort of breeds through that sort of men, new mentality of the team. There is a lot of echoes of that sort of team spirit from the mid eighties and stuff. And and they just don't want to. They just want to play and they just want to put in a hundred percent. And that's yeah. what, and it ain't hard. That's all it? we ask. It is. It ain't hard to be a West Ham, like, you know, not legend, but, you know, adored by the fans. Just got to put a shift in, even if you're not very good. As long as you try, that's what yeah. it's not your fault you get picks. But as long as you, you know, put it on and, you you know, you have a, you have a go, I mean, you know. But that's the uh, thing, Russ. I've never been into one of them. Don't get me wrong. We could sit here and we could go, he wouldn't be in my side, he wouldn't be in my side. But none of them boys put the shirt on to play rubbish. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether we think they're good enough or not is another story. But none of them yeah. put the shirt on to play rubbish. So don't give them it. You know, yes, the chicken run was famous for it. I stood in it once the seats went in the west side. I stood in the chicken run. And so yeah. I've seen players get it. But they only got it for a lack of effort. And as long as you're giving everything, you know, that's it. That's the best you can do. And, and you know, no one's, you know, they haven't said, is a tenner play me. Because I'm the best player you've got. They've been picked, and it's not their fault they've been picked. If you, if, you know, yeah. if that's yeah, no, I not totally fair. agree. I totally agree. That's I mean, I mean exactly the same with that, and uh, and that's and that's all it is. That is that is the West Ham way, Big Sam. That is the West Ham way. Um, where's the team? Let me bring it up. There we go. Look at that. Some goals in there. I like that. Nice team. And I like it. I like the way is you know there's a there's a couple of you know the inclusion of Sinclair and Julian Dix. Julian Dix, who I think when we interviewed Mark Ward, uh, he he basically did picked his eleven, which was basically the boys of '86, bar the left back. So he didn't put Steve in. He put he put Julian in, and he said if we had Julian Dix, we'd have won the league, no problem. That's, but that's George Paris was a good left back in that side. He, so he, he doesn't get the credit he no, deserves. No, you're totally right. And he says no disrespect to George or or, or Steve, but Julian, we we never really had like a proper. You know, left back in the same way with the rest of the team, and uh, but yeah, fantastic. Right, Ian, thank you very much, my friend. That was thank good you, fun. Russ. I loved it. Yeah, it was really, really good. Re and, and so I think these things an hour, like I literally, I feel like I've just sat down. It's shot through, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know. And you've got another Zoom call to talk about all your young boys. So you know, in terms of promotion, yeah. so that's all good. Um, thank you to everyone for watching as well, and for myself and for me. And take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jab appointments. When you, you can, you, don't, you get an appointment. You can just under over 18s can can book your appointments now. So make sure you do it. Uh, come on, you irons, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Happy take care, everyone. Come on, you irons.